Afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for P-Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. Today is Sunday, July the 10th, 2022. I'm Pastor Darren Moore coming to you live from Portsmouth, Virginia, and I'd like to welcome you so much uh, to P-Town Fresh, the Sunday edition. If you've never joined us before, P-Town Fresh is a unique opportunity where we connect with God and we utilize technology, and we have a wonderful time. I ask questions, you can ask questions and comments, and we uh, just see what goes on, all right? So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get ready. We'll get started with a word of prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you and bless your name, Lord God. We thank you for the day you've given us, God. We thank you for everybody that's here with us, as well as those who are watching online. And we just pray that you will allow this word to provide encouragement to us today give us insight and help us to understand more about your purpose for our lives. We thank you and give you glory. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, we bless you. Amen. 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 All right. So again, welcome. Um, hopefully everybody's able to hear us okay. Um, but we always like to start out with a question of the day. And our question of the day is, how do you react when somebody comes to your event empty-handed? Okay, how do we react when someone comes to your event empty handed? I wouldn't really care. All right, so uh, first off, we have a few responses on Facebook. Uh, let's take a look at some of those. Okay. So let's see, Anita White Snyder said, keep it moving. Someone else will ask them, trust, thank them for coming. Joe Cobb says, thank them for coming and keep it moving. David uh, Katash Merck says, no response. Either I joke them about it or I act like nothing happened. My queen, Precious Moore says, I thank the Lord that I always prepare enough for everyone to eat and make a mental note to specifically confirm what that person is bringing if they're invited to the next event. <laughs> Aaron Barnett says they're welcome. Shaylin, uh, per year Ross, says, I thank them for their presence, which is the real present. Then I tell them that if they need anything, they shouldn't hesitate to call me or let me know. That's a good answer. I like that. All right. And so anyone else? Going once, going twice? Um, what I usually do is if they don't bring anything, I have I'm still happy that it came, and then if it's something that that we need, I'll just have Mark to go grab, go to the store and go grab it. But other than that, though, I don't feel no type of way because I've been that person before. Okay. So um, again, um, still love them and let them know they're still welcome and they're still invited to the next um, get together. Amen. That's what's up. Why am I hearing? Hmm. Major I'm hearing something. Well, I'm hearing, yeah. Echo. Yeah, somewhere. Um, All right, amen. I just finished um, I in, um, yeah, I was, she's working. So just put her in the chat. Okay. Uh, in, in, in the chat where I can't take a look at the Zoom chat right now. Oh, okay. Then I'll look, I'll read it. She says, I wouldn't pressure it. Just let them say why they put it. Okay. Amen. Then, uh, Marquita. Yeah. Uh, you got it or you want me to? Yeah, you can do it. I can't even find it. All right. So, Marquita, she said, it depends on who it is and known circumstances. For me, if they're consistent with just showing up, eating, and leaving, then they wouldn't get another invite unless they bring something else like good energy they help out either with the setup or the breakdown you can still be considered a good guest even if you didn't tangibly bring anything when invite people is determined by what each person will bring to the experience and i typically ask specific people to bring food drinks and desserts because they're reliable and then um she said Sorry to address the situation. I react to behavior and attitude, not necessarily if someone brings something, unless as stated as above. All right. Amen. That's what's up. 
So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get into today's message and thank everybody for, uh, for those that did participate. Um, so we have been studying in the book of 1 John chapter 3, and today we're going to be focusing on, uh, beginning of focusing on verse 23 and 24. So let's take a look. All right. And uh, let's see. Here we go. Uh, where are we? Okay, here we go. So beginning in verse 28, pardon me, verse 18 for context. My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this, we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. And whatever we ask, we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by the light, the light. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the spirit whom he has given us. Amen. So now let's take a look. Okay, so first off, verse 23. All right, uh, well, first, last time we talked about asking and receiving from God. How we ask as a child asks a parent, right? With a level of respect and deference and not being too familiar with our requests. We also talked about the importance of keeping or guarding his commandments in an everyday practical manner. All right, and so as we look at verse 23, let's take a look at, and this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, as he gave us commandments. So here's a question. First off, what are the two requirements in his commandment? That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and love one another. Amen. So that we should believe on the name of his son, Yeshua, and that we should love one another. Now, also, take a look at the bookend approach that he uses. He first starts out with what? And this is commandment. his commandment. And also it ends with, as he gave us commandment. Amen? Amen. All right. So let's take a look. So the first thing, my question is, what does it mean to believe on the name of his son, Yeshua? Okay, to believe on the name of his son, Yeshua. What's that mean? Believe in his works, believe that he is the son of God. Okay, believe in his works, believe that he is the son of God. Okay. Anyone else? I would say that I agree. Okay, meaning? Meaning, as much as it has been, assuming that they, assuming that they've been taught, you know that uh, who he is through, you know, faith comes by what by hearing. Oh, you got. It? Mm -hmm. So assuming that they've heard the word preached in its pure essence, that he is the Son of God, and that if we believe in him, we have everything that is promised to us as believers. Okay. All right. So let's check this out. Let's let's see what this is and let's really break this thing down. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's look at this. So as we're looking at this passage here and welcome to Carla Love, my cousin, also Noble T. Mac L. 
and everybody else is checking us out on uh, Facebook. If you're checking us out, we ask you to do me a favor. Press that share button. Uh, tag somebody. All right, let us know who you are, where you're checking us out from. But watch this. So this first thing we're going to talk about is believe. Okay. This word believe is the Greek word pistuo. Okay. Which means to think to be true. To be persuaded of. Okay. To place confidence in. Now, which means that we're convinced, okay? So here's a, not a question, but think about it like this. We go to work and we pay our bills. Why? Because we have confidence that our money is going to go where it's supposed to go. Mm -hmm. Here's a question. How many of you would show up to work faithfully every day if you weren't sure that your company had enough money in the bank account to cover your check. What's the point of going? You just volunteering. <laughs> right? You need to get something out of it. You say what, that's what's not going to happen. What motivates me to go to work is my checks. So if I do not have the checks, I'm not going to go to work. Okay. All right. Well, here's a question. How many of you would send your money to Dominion Power and your mortgage company and so forth if you didn't believe that they would apply your payments to your balance. Again, the only reason I give it to them is for the service. And if they do not provide the service, there is no, no need for me to provide them with my money. Okay. So yet, watch this. Yet we have confidence in Yeshua. Many of you wouldn't be here watching online or sitting in my living room if you didn't have some level or belief or confidence in Yeshua as the son of God. Would y'all agree? Yes. yes. All right. So, and now we remember that Yeshua means the very name is the same thing as Joshua, which we talked about previously, right? Which means God is what? Salvation. Salvation. All right. Jehovah is salvation. And he is the anointed one, right? And so, you know, we, many people, they, we use the term, many people use the term Jesus Christ, but literally it's you know, Yeshua HaMashiach, right? So, but watch this. So, which means, as we said, Yeshua means God is salvation. And of course, as we said, he is the anointed chosen one of God. So when we believe in the son, in the name of the son, you automatically believe in the Father. Think about that. What's his name? Yeshua. His name means God, the Father. God is salvation. God is salvation. Does everybody understand that? So you truly can't believe in the name of the Son if you don't. Oh, that's my. Oh, oh. you still here? I turned, I muted it. You still here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> All right. There we go. All right. So, watch this. So, you can't believe in the name of the Son if you don't believe in the Father. Now, as we continue on, watch this. It's funny. God could have listed 97 commandments, conditions or requirements here. But how many did he list? Mm, no. Here. Here. In John, 1 John 23, how many did he list? 1 John 23 and 24, how many did he list? Two. Mm -hmm. Just two. Here's a question. Why do we overcomplicate it? We add so much more to it. We say, oh, well, they got to look a certain way. They got to act a certain way. They got to talk a certain way. They got to dress a certain way. But what the word says here is all we have to do is be what? 
confident in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. And number two, what? Love one another. Can we do that? Can we love each other? Yes. We're in 1 John chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. So here's a question for you. What are some of the challenges that we experience in loving each other? When someone does us wrong or lie to us, it's kind of hard to love someone. Okay. That person. Some, Ego. You said what? Ego. Ego. Okay, good. What else? What are the, some of the challenges we have in loving each other? Tribalism. What do you mean? I want to prefer your group. I want to be with your ethnic group or your social, uh, mm -hmm. social class group or, you know, that type of stuff. Amen. Okay. John Black? What I would say would tie into that, I think, a uh, difference in views. Yeah. Okay, a difference in views? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just like someone who's, I don't know, Pentecostal and then someone who's a Jehovah Witness. That even though you believe in different things, you're still supposed to love that person, not just because they don't believe in what you believe in. Mm. Okay. All right. So let's continue this thing on. So... This is just really a short summary, okay? And in a moment, we're going to, th this is basically like, if you ever, you know, in, in grad school, whenever we write a paper, you know, especially like a big paper, you know, we have an abstract in the beginning, like a thesis or whatever, you, you have the abstract, but then you have the full work afterwards. This is just an abstract of a larger body of work. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit. Amen. So let's look at verse 24. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this, we know that he abides in us by the spirit whom he has given us. Yeah. Okay. So, what's the result of keeping, guarding, or protecting his commandments close to our hearts? What's the result of doing that? Mm -hmm. um, one thing is having happiness in life. Okay. Well, what does the text tell us? One of the results. The result of keeping, his commandments. okay, keeping it, guarding, protecting his commandments. Because remember, we said the word keep means to guard or protect, right? So if we keep his commandment close to our heart, the passage here says, now he who keeps his commandments does what? Abides in him. So we abide in him. And he abides in us. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. So we're also going to break this down in a moment. So we're going to come back to that. So how do we know that he ab abides in us? By the spirit that he's given us. Okay, good. By the spirit that he gives us okay the holy spirit that he gives us he gives us an assurance as a reminder that we are his and now let's go check out the larger thesis all right so i want you to turn with me to john chapter 15 beginning in verse 1 all right now, this may be a very familiar passage of scripture, but let's check this out. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. 
You are already clean because of the word which I've spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. So let's talk about this first off. How many of you have ever grown anything intentionally? Like a garden or a plant? Yeah. Okay. What was your experience? Would you say you were pretty good at it? No. <laughs> My wife said no. Fair. Fair. Yeah. I was all right. Yeah, well, he said fair. Fair? Yeah. Okay. Joe? When it comes to gardening, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the equivalent of Dr. Kevorkian. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. That's rough. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! You can go off a minute on anything, but I not a green thumb. thumb. Concrete. Yeah. You said not a green thumb. Amen. All right. Well, and me, for those of you know, I also, you know, usually am like my wife. Although this year I said, you know what, we have this beautiful home, and I want to make sure that we can do a good job of really. Being a steward over what he's given us. I want our yard, you know, we have one of the nicest houses and biggest homes in the court. So I want to have one of the nicest yards as well. I, you know, it, it's, I'm tired of looking in my yard and seeing dirt spots and all of that. You know, like, whoa. You know, you, you walk out in the front yard, it was a big valley dip. You know, you can fall in there, you might lose a kid in there. Then not to mention the moles and all this damage that they've done. But I said, you know what? I'm going to do something different this year. So I, 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 yeah, you know, I, I, look, I got my sprinkler out there. <laughs> I, I, I went and I went and I, I, I called myself and did some research, talked to some people. Mm -hmm. I got to, and look, not, see, normal people, you know, this is how I know I was doing, going the extra mile. Because I, went, I went, was like, you know what? I need to plant some more grass seed because I got a lot of brown out there. So I, then one of my, uh, my homeboys was like, yeah, you need to go ahead. Before you just plant the grass seed, you got to um, aerate it and stuff. Yeah. So I went and bought a dethatcher, an aerator. Oh, I, yes, I did. So I went through and I went through my whole front yard, yeah. front lawn. And this thing, it, it, it broke up all the dirt and the thatch and the stuff up there. And so that way the, the, the stuff could breathe and you could get the seeds there. And I did. And a few weeks ago, I was talking to one of my neighbors up the street. And they were like, man, I hate looking at your yard. <laughs> He's like, you making me look bad. You, you know, if this was like the husband saying like, you know, now my wife looking at me like, what am I going, what you going to do? You know, we got to hook this thing up. So, because now, as it turns out, we have one of the greenest lawns in our court. Uh, I gotta look at that. Which is amazing to me. You still got a little bit to go there. Need to. Need I need to get you a John Deere hat, my friend. Huh? I need to get you a John Deere hat. No, no, not yet. <laughs> we still got a lot to do. A lot to go. So, you know, and, and then I had a little, a little spot of a dirt that I couldn't try to... I was trying to grow some stuff because what I did was basically... I added some dirt to level everything out. Right. And when I did, then I put seeds on top of it mm -hmm. and with, along with everything else. But the grass seed grew where there was already grass, but it the did. top part it didn't because I needed to cover it with something to hold in some of the moisture. That, you know. So I learned a couple of things. Now, why am I talking about all of this? Because we need to have some sort of context. It helps to have a context when we're reading this. In, in John 15, he says, I am the true vine. And his father is the what? The husbandman or the vine dresser or the soil worker or the farmer. Okay. So is everyone understanding this thing here? So what is the purpose then, my question 
of this plant or vine. Anyone? Okay. To produce fruit. Okay. All right. So you would say that is the goal of this vine. Anyone else agree, disagree? I agree. Okay. I want you to keep that in mind. Okay. It keeps you connected to God. Amen. So watch this. So as we're looking at this bearing fruit, this comes from the Greek word phero, okay? All right, which means to watch this, to bear or carry, okay? And so then I, we ask the question again, we come back to our question of the day. How do you view people that don't bring in anything to the cookout or potluck you send out a list and they come back empty handed now we, we earlier in the question of the day we said how do you react in that and I thank you for your participation in that but I want you to see and understand here is that the ultimate purpose of each branch as we see described here in this analogy is to do what? Be fruitful. Produce, fruit. produce. Is to produce fruit. To carry or bear fruit. No branch should come to the tree empty handed. Mm. So, is everybody beginning to get just a glimpse of this? All right, John, what you going to say? I was going to say, just like the fig tree. Okay. The one that Jesus cursed. Okay. Mm hmm. For that reason. Amen. Yeah. Why? It was supposed to be in season. It was supposed to have figs and it had none. Amen. So, I want us to keep that in mind. All right. Each branch bears fruit, which, watch this, ultimately bears fruit. So each branch bears fruit, okay? And that fruit itself ultimately bears fruit. So essentially, you have the potential to grow an entire forest or fruit grove from one tree. Would y'all agree? All right. So let's look at verse two. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That it may bear more fruit. So practically, then there are two paths. Or options for each branch. Number one. You don't bear fruit and thus be what? Cut off and removed. Or you do bear fruit and then be what? Pruned. Would y'all agree? Those are the two paths, two options. So let's take a look at this, the cut off. Cut off or taken away is the Greek word a hero, okay, which means to lift. So if you don't be bear fruit, you will be lifted from your environment and placed somewhere over here in the trash pile mm -hmm. to be burned. Okay, would, would y'all agree? Am I am I am I reaching on that? No, that's what it says. Okay, I'm just checking. Because, and now the next part, the other option is to what? To bear fruit and then be what? Pruned to bear more fruit. 
So what happens? What is this process of pruning? In this pruning process, you have a branch, and what you do is you begin cutting off the dead parts, but not just the dead parts. Sometimes you cut it back a little further, even in the living parts, so that way it can do what? Bear more, Bear more fruit. fruit. Now, to me, that almost sounds counterintuitive, hmm. counterproductive. You want it to bear more fruit. Why cut it, Why cut it back? So it can grow bigger and stronger. Yeah. So it can grow bigger and stronger. Okay. It's just like a well, hair analogy when you have split ends. Okay. Um, you cut off the split ends that way for when your hair is healthier and this it starts to grow together instead of one part is longer than the other and all that like that. Okay. Amen. That's good. That's good. I like that. So as we're looking at this then so we're talking about bearing fruit and being pruned to bear more fruit. So this word prune is the Greek word or in, in, in the King James, they use the word purges, but it's the Greek word. Watch this. Katha hero. OK, so the word for cut off was what a hero. The word for prune. Is Katha hero. Which means now, not only are you lifting, but you're cleansing. Okay? And that word comes from another Greek word, katharos, which means to clean, to pure, to make pure, make clear. So as we understand, then in order to make or bear more fruit, you have to do what? Prune back the branch. Because what does it do? It makes it more pure. Now, let's take a look at verse 3. Verse 3 says, you are already clean because of what? Now, I, 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 you may want to take some notes because you may not have heard it taught like this before. You're already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So verse three says, first off, you're already what? Clean, clean because of what? The, the words that he already spoke to us. And so that reminds me a little bit of Ephesians 5. Okay. And beginning in verse 25. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ also what? Loved the church and gave himself for her. That he might what? Sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. See, the word of God has a cleansing effect. Says that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish, without blemish. Excuse me. The word for cleanse here in the Greek, guess what? It's katharizo. Sound familiar? It's simple. Are y'all getting this thing? Because yeah. look, what was the word for clean? Katharos. Uh -huh. The word that he's using for cleanse is katharizo. Same word. Just a different form of it. Almost like, like a catheter. Like a, like, like, like a catheter. Right? Because what does a, class, a catheter do? To catheterize, what does that mean? Somebody Google it. L look it up. Y'all got, what does it mean to catheterize? It's 
What's the purpose of it? Because I, I want us to get to the root of this thing. I want us to see some things here. What y'all find? Huh? They can deliver one to you. Yeah, she said that's good. Oh. Um, in medicine, a catheter is a thin tube made from medical grade material serving a broad range of functions. They can be inserted into the body to treat diseases or perform a surgical procedure. Uh, Remove All right, so it's um, it's to enter your bladder and urine starts to flow, so it helps it to flow. So, in other words, watch this. You're making it pure. You're clearing it out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because others can't... The reason why you need that is your body doesn't do it normally. Mm -hmm. Are, are y'all understanding? Mm -hmm. And so here, again, that's where the, we associate that same word with this. All right? So, which means to cleanse, to purge, to purify. So now, I want us to see this. We're clean. That the part of the process of the purging, of the pruning, comes from what? The word. And our submitting to it. Amen? Amen. It's, it's part of what cleans us. So then watch this. As we get to verse 4, back in, verse, in uh, the book of John, watch this. He says what? Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it, what? Abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Abide in me. Does that sound familiar? From where? From what we just read in uh, John. From what we read in 1 John. Yes. Let's go back. Remember how I told you that this was just a what? This was That was just the abstract. And now we're about to look at the real thesis. So watch this. As we go back, listen to what he said in the book of uh, 1 John. He said... And this is his commandment that we should believe in the that we should believe on the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in what? In him. Are, are y'all seeing this? The similarity? All right, so now let's go back. So, you say go back to, uh, right, to John, the book of John. John 15. Mm -hmm. See, here we go. In order to do this, for this process to take place, the branch, as we see in verse 4, it can't bear fruit of itself. If I cut that branch off and put it somewhere, it's going to die unless it has some connection point to the vine. The branch has to stay connected to the vine. Who's the vine? Christ. So here's a question. What are you doing to stay connected to the vine? John Black? There's several ways. Um, reading, fellowship... Um, praying. Yes, praying. Okay. Singing songs and hymns. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Anyone else? Keeping the commandments. Keeping the commandments. And which in this case, we're referring to which ones? All of them. Well, and, and the, the two that we see here are what? Believe in his word. Mm hmm. And Okay, believe in his name, okay, and loving everyone. But we remember, even he said, look, all of these that are fulfilled, and to refer to what Joe is referring to, the other ten, 
you know, he said, all of those are fulfilled in that you what? Love your neighbor. Love your God. And love your neighbor, right? Mm -hmm. those, those are the two. The, the, that's what we need to do, right? Mm -hmm. And technically, if we do that, the so, and so, but watch this. Let's, let's continue on. I want you to see something. The whole purpose of this plant is to do what? The plant? Mm hmm. Uh, to produce fruit. To produce fruit. If I plant a flower, and it never blooms. How do I feel about that? You did something wrong. You did something wrong. How, how likely would you be to keep that flower around? Some of y'all, the flower blooms one time per year for like a, a day. And y'all saw that. Y'all like, look, that flower got to go. And it did what it was supposed to do. But why? Because we want to see the fruit. Does that make sense? And what's the key to bearing the fruit? Abiding in the vine. So here's a question. Do you desire to bring fruit into the kingdom of God? If so, then what do we need to do? Abide in him. Abide in the vine. So then watch this. The first step of purging, of course, as we're looking at this and, and we're seeing this, now we're moving on and back in John, in John 15, we're seeing how this focuses on us. And he begins to break it down. Watch this in verse 5. I am the vine. He's making it clear. Who's talking? Jesus. All right, Yeshua, right? He's saying, I am the vine. You are the what? Me vine? You. <laughs> you branch. <laughs> All right, everybody understand? So watch this. He who, and he breaks it down real simple. He who abides in me, if you stay, if you stay abiding in me, you stay connected to me as the vine and I and him. That's the combination to bear much fruit. Yep. Why? Because as the branch stays, I need you to see something here. As the branch stays connected to the vine, to the vine yeah. Yeah. then what happens? There's an interchange. I need you to see this. The vine pulls the nutrients from the ground and therefore can share with the branch. Y'all see that? Mm -hmm. But watch this. The branch has the leaves that absorb the, the nutrients. Are, are y'all understanding it? It absorbs the sun. See, the roots, the roots by themselves, the they can't live. Because they don't have access to the sun. So you need this symbiotic process. Is everybody understanding? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why in order to be fruitful, there has to be an interchange. There has to be this, this two-way connection on both sides. An exchange. We have to abide in him. And he needs to abide in us. Synchronicity. Is, is everybody understanding this thing? Yeah, yeah right. and some, I just feel like, and I feel sometimes I feel like you have to be uncomfortable. You know, if your pot is not big enough, your roots is not going to grow. Come on. Yeah. Because you know what? That's part of the process of the pruning. See, because now when we're looking, see, before we were looking at it in the picture of, okay, this is a plant, this is a fruit, this is what happens. But now look at what happens. He puts us in the scenario. So now if you are the branch, how do you feel when you're being pruned? 
It's not pleasurable, is it? But it's necessary to bring forth fruit. See, one of the things is we don't we, we got we have to stop being reluctant because every time God begins to cut and he begins to bring the pruning shears, we're like, no, not that. It hurts. But it's going to have to hurt in order to bring forth life. That may be a word for some of y'all. Some of y'all may need to prune some things or some people. Or some beliefs or, 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 you know, some lifestyles out of the picture. So that way you can bring forth the true fruit that God wants to bring forth in your life. And so then watch this as we continue on. He said, he who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me. He makes it clear now in this analogy with us. If anybody does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they're burned. Just like the weeds that you collect. Just like the dead branches that you trim off the tree. But if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Because my words, what do they do? They cleanse, they purify, they help to prune. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit. So you will be my disciples. Somebody talk to me. What does verse seven and eight mean to you? First John? Mm -hmm. First, no, John 15. I know we're getting deep today. We're going to hit some things. John Black? It's a parallel with John 3 and 22, where whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Mm -hmm. But it expounds on it just a little bit more in the eighth verse by saying to bear fruit so that we know that it's not just the things that we're doing, are in vain, but it's actually producing. Okay. Amen. What he said. Anyone else? Ditto. Ditto. Okay. <laughs> so, watch this. See, the entire context of this passage is all about the process of bringing forth fruit. That's the goal. If you were to put a mission statement, a vision, as we like to do now in business terms, to what? The purpose of the plant is to what? Produce, produce fruit. fruit. Even to the point where if it's not producing fruit, what happens? Because why? Watch this. If it's not producing fruit, that's not a sign of life. That's an indicator of death. Amen. See, when you see something and, it, and you see, I, I'll give you a perfect example. We have an iris, some irises that we pulled out of the yard, the garden um, last week. And, you know, because we had they, those things multiplied and we had so many of them. But now that we've taken them out, we put them in some water and, and gave away to some while they were still living. But they were nice and green in the ground. But now some of them are turning what? Yellow. Yeah. Which means that it's what? Dying. Dying. You, you, are y'all seeing this thing? But what is green, it's vibrant. It's healthy. It's alive. It's able to reproduce. It was reproducing so much that, I'm going to tell you how we got these, these irises. We had a guy who helps us work on, um, who, who helped do some yard work for us. You know, lives in the neighborhood. Great guy. And he uh, did some yard work. And one time he was like, I guess he did some yard work in somebody else's house. And they were getting rid of a couple of irises. So we came and planted like three, maybe four irises. We just took up about, what, 15, 20 of irises. Why? Because of the fruitful multiplication. Now, let's see something. 
how do we glorify the Father then? Verse eight, verse 8 says it clearly. By this my Father is glorified that you do what? That you what? Die and wither away? That you what? Bear much fruit. Bear much fruit. See, now I'm going to put this thing in context for us. If our passion is bearing fruit as the Father's passion is bearing fruit, what will we ask for? What will we desire? We're going to desire what the Father does. We're going to desire to see that come true in our lives. Why? Because our requests will now be in line with us bearing fruit for the kingdom of God. See, the motivation of your request when you'll have what you want, what you ask for, is when you're aligned with what? His passion and his purpose. That's why we can't take this out of context. And I think that so many of us have missed it. So many churches have missed it. Why? Because we have translated this into having church. But God never called us to have church. He never called us to have a good time. He called us to do what? Bear to bear fruit for the kingdom of God. Why? Because he wants a beautiful fruit grove. And he'll help and support any kingdom plans to bring this fruitfulness in the kingdom to fruition. Wow. So now I want to ask something else. I'm, 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 Y'all already said I'm already going there. Welcome, Deja. Welcome, welcome. I'm glad you're able to join us. Watch this. Here's a question for you. What is the mark then of true discipleship? What's the what? The mark of true discipleship. John? Well... Looking at it from the perspective of that a disciple has been discipled, or I could say been produced, and when he is, or he or she, I would rather say, can reproduce. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it takes a certain level of maturity to reproduce. My shirt. Ah, okay, all right. So Roxana says her shirt. Let me see your shirt, Roxana. Well, you can't really see it. You can you can stand up. Oh boy, are you serious? I'm serious. Oh. Oh, well, you can finish. But it just says Breaking cycles making disciples Breaking cycles making disciples What I want you to see Watch this And thank you Because watch this The mark of a true disciple The mark of true that true discipleship Is occurring in your life Not that you're showing up and singing on a choir He said by this my father Is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be, oops, so you will be my disciples. Everybody got that? Mm -hmm. So what is the mark of true discipleship? That we what? Bear much fruit. So now I ask the real hard question. Are you a true disciple of Yeshua? My next question is, where is your fruit? Wow. See, we don't want to be like, see, we talked about how we feel when 
somebody comes to the cookout empty handed. We talked about how we react. Now, some of y'all were very nice and generous. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is when you send out a list and an invitation and you expect everyone to contribute and bring something to the table. And when they don't do their part. See, the problem is, not only does that frustrate you, but if you're depending on that person for something for someone else, mm -hmm. yeah. they miss out. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is we have been coming in the kingdom of God empty handed. God is looking at us and saying, where is your fruit? See, the problem is, you see, now this, this stuff kind of comes into play. It makes sense when it says in James, you have not because you ask not. But then when you do ask, you ask for the wrong reason. So you consume it among upon your own lusts mm -hmm. because you're getting you're trying to ask for stuff for you. Instead of the whole purpose why we're here is to bear fruit in the kingdom of God. When you start praying to be fruitful. And then what happens is you begin to start aligning yourself and what you begin to pray for aligns with that fruitfulness. Amen. See, some of you watch this. I, I, I might help somebody. Some of you are looking for a car. Some of you are looking for a home and you're praying for a car. You're praying for a home and you wonder why it's not happening. Yeah. But when you begin to align yourself with the purpose of God and you begin to say, you know what, God, I do want a car. But it's not just for me. It's so I can help and be a blessing to others and help them in their life. Because I don't want to be a consumer. I want to be a producer in the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. And I want to help people. To understand, I want to help him be able to, to drive to them and, and, and sit with them and, and go out and meet with them and take them and so to help them to grow. Amen. Or I want to have a home, not so I can just sit there and, and just enjoy my little corner, <laughs> but so that I can open my home and that I can be hospitable, as it says in your word, as I can show forth your love. Yeah. Are, are y'all beginning to understand this thing? Amen. So, um, and I'm going to hit you with this. Just to, we're, we're, we're going to come back to this, as you can see, um, next week. This is just part one, I guess. And we're going to finish this part. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love, just as I've kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. <laughs> These things I've spoken to you that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. See, part of the reason why some of us, and this is going to be next week, but I'm going to just give you a preview. Part of the reason why some of us are so frustrated and walking around depressed is because what we're trying to do is we're trying to eat the seed instead of planting it and allowing others to partake and grow in it. We're asking for something for us instead of helping and being a blessing to others. Amen. See, when we have a heart and desire to pour into others and to see others grow. But first, in order to do that, we got to submit to the process ourselves. Yeah. That's a whole nother thing. The process. But I'll let you go back and you, you can read that. And, 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 and we're going to talk about this a little bit later um, next Sunday, Lord willing. We'll finish that because this thing just kind of resonated in me. So um, with that in mind, what thoughts, comments, questions, responses? Give us a few details of bearing fruit. Okay, excellent. So, first of all, ultimately, bearing fruit means that, to give you a perfect example, if I, if I am a branch and I'm to bear fruit, that's part of the process of reproduction. And so what I'm doing is I'm making a disciple. So this process of bearing fruit is for me, first of all, to 
submit to God's plan and his will, understand what it means to be a disciple, learn how to grow in God. How, how to read, how to read his word, how to commune with him, connect with him, how to help others to do the same. And then what do we do? I do help others to do the same. And in helping them to do the same, I teach them to do the same. Well, when I read it, it seems like bearing fruit means um, making progress. And that's not always like a monetary marker. Sometimes we, we can make progress in our personal lives. Like we can, like the church say, break cycles. We can break addictions. We could, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because I think people are known by their fruit sometimes. Like you might, like, mm -hmm. have you know somebody who's just a really sweet person, always willing to help. You might know somebody who's, you know, a real solid guy, always uh, willing to help or, or, develop other people and their ideas. So mm -hmm. can we look at, like in our everyday lives, what you said about discipleship and getting the word, but what about like tangible things that we see in our life daily? Like when, when, I, when, you, when I read Bearing Fruit, I'm, I'm thinking making progress. And that, uh, that's not always like the size of your bank account. Sometimes making progress could be, you know, it could be an, it could be a lifestyle change. It could be it could mm -hmm. be a physical change. If let's say you need to drop a hundred pounds, it could it could be something as simple as that. It could be something that other people can see you and see the change. Okay. You know what I mean? Now and and with that, so you bring up an interesting point, but and so we can there there is a level of fruit as we would call in the sense of fruit of the spirit okay right. and, and and seeing some Love, of this joy, the, peace long suffering exactly and seeing some of this change goodness. in our lives and as i said you refer to it and by their fruit you shall know them and so but i think one of the biggest things is that and i'm gonna just be transparent we as the body of christ have substituted acceptance of growth in a particular area instead of growth in the kingdom. Mm. And so, because th there, there is, th that is great for us to grow. We do want to see fruitfulness in our lives. That's part of it. You, you need to see, you know, before you see the full rose, you see the small bud. You know, you see signs of life. You see animals, you know, doing their thing and, and you know, and pollinating it and all. But I think the one of the biggest things is that we have to change our mentality from being consumers to producers. Because even in the animal kingdom, we have those things that are consumers. And the one of the things I realized is that, case in point, there are certain times when if you introduce a certain species that is a consumer then into an ecosystem, it can literally destroy the ecosystem because all it does is consume. They can be invasive. Now, and, and because the, the balance is thrown off. And so, but the thing is, I think that truthfully, the church has been so focused on what's in it for us instead of really, because the thing is, what happens is we have this big concept of go to church instead of being the church. And, and, and that's what we need to do. We need to be the church. We need to be the ones who are personally responsible for showing love to our neighbor instead of now having a food pantry is great. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, what that does is that excuses some people from doing their responsibility and their part. And they say, oh, well, we got that at our church. And so therefore they don't have to do. And so. You know, it's 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 a very big concept. It's it's definitely not pleasant waters, 
because nobody wants to hear this. But in reality, God never called us to build seats and pews. He called us to make disciples. And that's what each and every one of us is called to do. You know, what we're, what we're supposed to do is by doing this, and, 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 and again, we even go back to the same example of just imagine what if the early disciples said, you know what? I've made some changes in my life. I'm good. You know what? You used to hate those, those uh, Samaritans, but I see you hanging out with them. You dapping them up. You good people now. And so if they would have stopped and you know what? I see you. I know you a tax collector. And I know you used to be unfair, but you started being fair now. You good. But if they stopped there and didn't share and reproduce, where would we be? And so at some point, we have to bring in the literal fruit representation. We have to. Because if not, I'll give you a perfect example. In the living community, you can be fertile or you could be sterile. Not barren, but sterile. Some of us are walking around and choosing to be sterile. Even if we look back, in the very beginning, we see that even in the book of Genesis, he says, go and what? Be fruitful and multiply. This same theme. And so at some point, and how do we bear fruit? We take what we learn. We hear it. We hear the word. And we apply it to our lives and we allow it to change and transform us and as we change and are transformed we ask to be changed and transformed more and then what do we do we reach out to others who are just like us and we ask them to join us in this journey or we help them or welcome them along the path in this journey amen, amen. John and I think it somewhat goes into the, the process of when, it, when you start to, like, like the parable of the sower, mm -hmm. when you begin to sow these seeds and uh, say you sow 100 seeds and 30 of them don't fall on good ground, they may fall on stony ground, some may spring up a little bit, the parable is going by when you seek to be fruitful and you, and you have the love that produces fruit, but when it doesn't when it doesn't take root like it ought to and it's not received the way it should some people may reject it some people may accept it a little bit and they don't get the full right. production out of it but when when it actually does what it's supposed to do it reproduces mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know when we actually can show the love to people that that can receive it to the degree that it can you know that they can take it like you were saying to to be able to to be able to cherish it to be able to acknowledge that it's for you that it's not just for you but it's also to be redistributed and when you can have it to that capacity it's not something that you can keep to yourself it's something that you use in the same way that it was used for you because you see the need of it you see how important it was to you how can you not amen i got a question for you for us, just something as you were talking, I just thought about. Now, just 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 something to think about. I don't know. How do we get more seed, more watermelon from seedless watermelons? Huh. 
something to think about. All right. So with that in mind. (laughs) (laughs) So any other thoughts, questions, comments, responses on today's message? I know today's message was a little deep. Yeah, so as far as just um, just put and taking what Mr. Joe, what you said, Mr. Darren said, and John said, put it all together, as far as you were saying, um, how do you, uh, what is your definition of bearing seed? And you stated something about it being tangible because such and such is nice. And, you know, but the thing is, in correlation to that, what Mr. Darren was saying, that could be your purpose of a way to bear seed. Um, example, Mr. Darren, he's great with words. He's great with philosophies. You know, John is good with putting words together. And Marquita is just Marquita. She's just a great as She's just a lovable person. So those are their purposes in life to use whatever they have going on with their life to be able to bear seed, to be able to bear fruit. And then again, make disciples of their way, of, of their purpose. Um, but yeah, so pretty much... Um, Today was good, you know. I really like the whole thing with the uh, roots and the vine and the tree and the branches. Good job on that. Um, but yeah, uh, that's my two cents. Amen. Anyone else? Thoughts, questions, comments, responses? Well, Dallas did say bearing fruit to me means good seeds that will follow him. Amen. All right, remember this scene on. Um what justice where Tupac and um, the other people he just bum rushed the cookout he just put in the name of the cookout say hey we all family kind of lucky whoever was throwing that cookout they didn't have a problem with that they like welcome join them yeah you family and that right there is an example of bearing fruit I mean that's one of the fruit of the spirit is love just to be so welcoming that they knew they could just jump right in. They get a plate and they get love. Everything would be love. Like, that's not the case with a lot of people in a lot of different places. Well, I would say that as far as bearing fruit in, in, in that case, I would say that that's, that's a sign of bearing fruit, but in full reproducing. I mean, it's part of the process of love because definitely we're supposed to show love. You know, and honestly, you know, even to the, when you bring, reminded me, thank you. In that cookout analogy, even as some people said earlier, you know, if you don't bring the, what's expected to the cookout, you know, most people aren't going to kick you out. And the truth of the matter is, God hasn't kicked many people out of the church. But at the end, when it's all said and done, he's not going to ask, how much did you have in your building fund? So he wants us in the way that we do that. And it is, you know, one of the big keys that, as you know, as I preach and I teach, a simple practical method in bearing fruit and helping to evangelize and helping to make disciples is one key ingredient. Y'all know what it is? Let's see how well y'all know. What is it? Love. Love. See, y'all learn. That's it. That's what we need. And we need to bring that fruit. But we can't just say, I love you. Mm-hmm. But we need to have it. We need to be intentional with it. You say love is an action. Love is an action. We need to help somebody. And so we got to love them through their mess. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what this whole thing is. Especially. Because I can't tell you, that you some of you are here because somebody here has loved you through your mess. And that's where, that's what discipleship is. It doesn't have to be this, see, again, at the core, now there are certain things that that when we do systematic discipleship, we teach you to do certain things, but at the root of it, is love. And it's loving and teaching those to love God. But you got to first learn how to love God yourself. Amen. You got to understand who he is. You got to, you know, so, so you got to put in some work. Because in the Greek, the word disciple is methades. And so with that, 
it's a dual word. Not only are you a learner, you also are a teacher mm -hmm. in that same word. And so that's what each of us in our goal in our lives should be. We should be consistently seeking to learn, but not just learning so that we can have the big head and have the honorary degree, but so that we can teach others. Christine. Mimi that says Psalms 19 1 through 9 and I just said it off the top of my head little things like that go far amen amen that's what's up so with that in mind let's go ahead and get ready to pray out hopefully we've learned some things today some tools to apply so let's get ready to pray Most gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this word, for this lesson that you've taught us today. And as the title says, how to be have the green thumb. That's what you want to see in us. You want to be able to look at us and you want us to be your garden. And so in the much as somebody who's growing something, I had a cousin yesterday who picked a, a, a pepper that was so look, looked so good and delicious and I'm sure they enjoyed it. Mm. But that's what you want to do with our lives. Mm. You want to look at our lives and say, oh man, John has it. Christina has it. They got it. And they're helping to share with others. That's what you want. And so, Father, my prayer is that you'll help us. Help us to overcome our insecurities, our personal level of, of just, you know, areas where we're not comfortable. But when it comes to it, it's not about comfortable. It's about purpose. Because if we go to save somebody out of a burning building, it ain't about comfort. <laughs> We're moving to help them. So, Father, help us to see your word and to truly walk this thing out. And for those of us who feel like we're weak in certain areas, I pray that you'll help to give us strength. Help to find others to come alongside of them and support them. As you said in your word, to bear one another's burdens. To truly demonstrate that love so that we can show them forth who Yeshua is not just by what we write on a piece of paper or what we put on the screen or what we say on a timeline or in a video but by how we act and demonstrate love towards them we thank you Father and we give you glory in the wonderful name of Yeshua we bless you Amen. 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 All right. So thank you all so much for checking us out today and joining us. Uh, Lord willing, y'all be able to join us uh, and come back again next week um, as we finish off this passage because we'll be returning back. We'll be still hitting this uh, first John three, but we're going to be coming back to this John uh, 15. Amen. And, and, and look. It's no, I'm going to tell y'all a secret. Next week, we're going to be looking in John 15. So if you want to take a look and study along with us, shh, we'll be in John 15. <laughs> Don't be creepy.
Huh? Now it's not really a secret. Anymore. I said, don't be creepy. <laughs> he said, don't be creepy. <laughs> Amen. All right. So love y'all. Be blessed. And Lord willing, we'll see y'all for a Wednesday morning prayer. And then again, Lord willing, next Sunday. All right. Love y'all. Be blessed. Love you, sir. Yeah. And thank you so much, Amy and Chris and everybody else.